Hey fellow gliders, today we're going to take a look at how to create a unique coding system for your app. You can use this in a variety of applications, whether it's an order ID or a SKU number or a referral code or an invite code. So we're going to show you how to set this up and how to assign it to each user in your app. So then that way your users can be assigned this unique number. All right. So the very first thing um, is that we have a setup here that's pretty simple. We just have two sheets. We have a user sheet and we have this affiliate code generator sheet, which is just going to be a one row table. Back in our user sheet, you can see that our we have a row ID and the row ID already generates a unique ID for each user, but that unique ID is not very pretty. So if you wanted to actually use this value for display purposes, as well as to um, allow like an admin, maybe to see this and be able to read it very easily or to have a user be able to share out this unique number. Again, this one's not very pretty. It also contains punctuation, uppercase and lowercase. It's not very standardized across every user. So we want to create a pretty unique ID for each user. And here's how we can go about doing that. All right. So the very first thing we need is a column that's going to house this unique ID. So I'm going to create a new column here. And for our purposes today, we're going to call this like invite code. So I'm pretending that in my app, when a user onboards, we generate an invite code for every user. So then that way, if they share out this invite code, then other users, when they onboard, um, can type in a select user's invite code. And then the user who has shared out their invite code maybe gets some sort of rewards or something like that later in my app. So this would be an invite code for that user. And again, we want this to be a pretty word like or something unique, but something that's pretty to look at as well. All right. Uh, back in my app, we have this new tab full of users. Uh, we're going to make this a user profile tab. So anytime you want to make a user profile sheet or a dashboard of whatever, um, your source should always be your user profile sheet. Make it a details view. And then in options, filter the view where the unique identifier, email in this case, uh, is the signed in user. All right, so then that way, if I'm person six, I see person six is my tab. And if I'm person zero, then person zero is my tab. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and make this look prettier. So we'll just go ahead and add a title component where you have the person's name and maybe their invite code as part of the title. Something very, very, very simple. All right, now before they see this, uh, we want to onboard our users. So I like to just duplicate this screen. And one of the screens is gonna be the profile. So I can call this like my profile. And the other one is gonna be onboarding. So this could be called like welcome. And then we want to set some visibility conditions on these tabs. So I'll know that a person has a completed profile when they have an invite code that's been generated for them. All right. So sometimes what I'll do is also create a, like a date time column in here and say onboard uh, completed on. And then if this column is empty, then we know that they still haven't onboarded yet. You know, so there's a variety of ways here. I do have a, an easy onboarding template available in the Glide template store. I'll link that in the description below in case you want to take a look at that. All right. So here we have, again, a welcome screen and then my profile screen. And we're going to set some visibility conditions on these. So the onboarding screen will have a visibility condition set when the user profiles onboarding completed on is empty meaning that they haven't yet completed their onboarding. So that cell is empty. So we should see the onboarding screen. The my profile will have the reverse. We'll only show this when onboard completed on is not empty. So I imagine sometime during my onboarding, uh, we'll push a button that then fills in that column, which will then switch the screens and uh, we'll no longer see the onboarding screen, but then show the my profile screen. 
All right, now part of the onboarding process, this is completely up to you as to what fields you want to create. Usually I put in here like, you know, enter your first and last name, enter a phone number, something like that. Uh, but to keep things simple and to the point of our video today, we're going to just have them enter in maybe an invite code from somebody else, right? So I'm imagining that, yes, we have this invite code that belongs to the person, but also during onboarding, we might have uh, an entered code, meaning, um, if this person has an invite code, but person user one is signing up with user zero's invite code, well then user zero should be rewarded for that. And we'll keep track of that as we develop our app. So this will be an entered code, uh, text column, sure, done. Um, looks like we already have some values in here for, sorry, I'm gonna delete all these. I think it was during my testing, I just happened to remember that I had a column in there. That's interesting. All right, so then during the onboarding process, we're gonna ask the user if they have an invite code. So we'll do that with a text entry component. So search for text, text entry. And here, this will be the entered code. The title will be, um, you know, have an invite code. And the placeholder can be, you know, enter it here. All right, and then we'll place a button for them to complete their profile. All right, now we want them to complete their profile regardless if they have an invite code, because if they don't have an invite code, they can still complete their profile. But if they put in a code here, then we want to be able to record that code and keep it as part of their profile. This also means we need to check to make sure that the invite code is valid. So we know that an invite code would be invalid if it doesn't match our schema, um, if it doesn't belong to anybody, or if it belongs to the actual person, which it shouldn't because at this point they haven't yet created a code yet. So we can probably ignore that, but um, it should probably match somebody's code here. All right, but then when they complete profile, um, then it should generate a code for this person. Okay, so in order to see some of that logic, we first need to determine how we're going to generate the codes. And thus comes in our affiliate code generator. I'm gonna rename this to uh, invite code generator. Again, it's just a one row table. Here I have a row ID in here already. And our code will be generated by a counter. So I'll call it a counter column. This will be just a number column with no precision and no group separator. And we'll start the counter at one. All right, so what this means then is that when somebody signs into our app, we're going to give them the number one. And then we will uh, increase the counter by one. And that way the next person that signs up has the next number in line. This assures us that every user will have something unique assigned to them. And even if a person later decides they want to delete their account, um, we know that there will still be a unique number. We're not going to reuse any numbers because the counter is just going to keep on going. Okay. Now giving them just a single number like this is kind of ugly and, and not very good practice, especially if we're doing with like ID numbers of sorts. So really we want to standardize the length of our unique identifiers. And so really at this point, then it's just a matter of determining, okay, how many users are you expecting your app to ever have, right? Um, let's say your app will have a maximum value of like a, a million users, right? Well, a million would be seven characters. Right, so if you have um, your ID be seven characters long, that should be sufficient. All right, so what we could do here is add or make sure that this value here is always seven characters. There's a few ways to do that, but the easiest way that I found is actually using one of Glide's plugin columns under the text type columns, and it's pad text at start, which basically means put some characters at the start of some of a selected text column. All right, so I'm gonna select pad text at start. And it's asking us for three things. It's asking us first, what text do you want to pad? In this case, it'll be our counter. 
Okay. The next thing is how long do you want that counter or that, that text to be? So if we give it a padding of let's say six, okay, now you see it put five spaces in front of our counter. So now it's six characters long, which means that if our app has 999,999 users, we'll have 999,999 unique IDs. If you want to go into the millions, just make it seven. All right. And then the padding, instead of spaces, we want it to make it look like a number. So for the padding, we'll just, instead of a space, we'll make it a zero. And so now we have, it'll always be seven characters long, starting with zeros, followed by whatever our counter is. All right, so even if our counter goes into the double digits, 22, let's say, it's still seven characters long, but now it's preceded by five zeros instead of six, and so forth. We'll go into three digits, four digits, five digits, six digits, and so forth, right? So we can have technically up to 999, you know, uh, million <laughs> character or uh, um, ID um, users and have a unique amount of IDs for each of them. All right, so this works really well if you want just to have each user to have a unique ID. This works really well if you are a restaurant and you want to generate unique order IDs that are always be unique no matter when they're created, right? But if we're making like an affiliate code or an invite link, you might even want to make this a little bit prettier. Um, by branding this a little bit. So I'm going to rename this column as padded counter. But then for our invite code, maybe we want to add some text in front, right? And here's where you can like brand your invite code, right? My name of my app here is affiliate link concept, ALC, right? So what I could do is I could create a template column here, start it off with ALC, but then followed by uh, some character where that character will be replaced with our padded counter, like so. And we can call this uh, invite code. All right, so our invite code will always be 10 characters long, our three characters for ALC followed by the seven digits of our padded counter. All right. All right, so then now that we have this invite code in our user sheet, we can bring that code into the user sheet by using a single value column. So I'll create a single value column. I'll call it next code. And I'm gonna grab the first, which is the only row in our invite code generator. And I'm gonna grab the uh, invite code, boom. So now we see it doesn't matter which user it is, we have 17 different users here, but whichever user goes and um, in, uh, onboards themselves first will have the next code of 001. And then what we're planning on doing is taking this value, writing it into the invite code, and then increasing our counter by one, which then means that the next person to onboard themselves will have 02 as their onboarding code. All right, so in order to make that happen, we need to have our user sheet talk to our invite code generator, right? Um, we want some sort of action that as soon as this is, uh, happens, then this user's row talks to the invite code generator row to increase our counter by two, or increases it by one to the number two, which then gives us a next invite code, which then will be ready for the next user. All right, so to have our invite code or our user sheet talk to the invite code generator, uh, we need to create a relation. And so we'll just relate the invite code of the user and we'll match the values in the invite code generator invite code. Okay, and then we'll call this um, rel assigned code. Right, So you see that um, this was the code that was generated. I assigned it to this user. It found that match. And because it found a match, now we can do some uh, actions to increase that counter through this relation. All right. OK, so next we need to check to see if the code that people are entering during onboarding, if it matches anybody's invite code. If not, then we know it's an invalid 
code. So to do that, we just create another relation column and we'll call this relation to valid invite codes. All right, so we're gonna relate what the users are entering, their entered code, and we're gonna see if it matches anybody's invite codes, users invite code. All right, now you see here, it does match spaces, which is unfortunate, right? It's taking, it's finding nothing here and it's matching it to nothing. So we'll need to do some, um, we need to do some tinkering with this, but basically when somebody goes ahead and enters a code here, right? If it doesn't match anything, then it's, got, it's not gonna find anything. So we should be okay here. All right. So this should be enough to get us going, All right? So now as part of our onboarding process, right? We can do a couple of things. First thing is this person already has uh, an invite code assigned to them. They were the first ones, let's say, okay? And so this person's not gonna have an invite code. They'll just complete their profile and be done. All right, so as part of this complete profile, um, we have the invite code, fine. Um, and then we wanna check to make sure if whatever they're entering here is valid. So to do that, we're gonna create a custom action on this button. And we're gonna check a couple of things. First, we're gonna check to see um, if that relation to valid invite codes, okay, if the entered code, actually, sorry, if the entered code is not empty, meaning they've typed in something, okay, but the relation to valid invite codes, right, if that relation also is not empty, meaning they've typed something in and it found a match of somebody's invite code. Okay, then we're gonna do uh, two things. We are going to set columns. We are going to complete their onboarding. So we'll just set the current date and time to the onboard completed on, and we'll assign them the next code. So the invite code for them will be the next code. Okay. And then we want to increase that counter. So then we're going to increment a number, not of this item, but rather of the relation to the assigned code. We'll increase the counter by one. Cool, okay, so they've entered in an invite code. It's valid, so we'll leave it alone. All right, but if they've entered a code at any other time, right? If, if it doesn't matter whether they entered it something or they didn't enter something, or they entered something and it's not valid, right? Any other case, we're still gonna do these two things. So we'll set a column value. We're still going to complete their onboarding. We're still going to give them the next code, but let's give them a dash under the entered code. Meaning if they didn't put in anything, then we, give it a dash, or if they put in some garbage for the invite code and it didn't match anything, we're gonna replace that with just a dash, followed by the increment number, all right? So increment number, rel assign code, counter by one. So the only difference here is that if they found a valid invite code, then we're gonna keep it when they complete their onboarding, otherwise we're replacing it with a dash. All right, so we're gonna call this complete onboarding, Save. All right, so this person here, we're gonna have them complete their profile. Boom, it hides the screen. Um, and now we're on our profile page because of the visibility conditions that we created at the beginning of this tutorial. All right, let's say person zero now wants to share their invite code. Um, we might wanna create something pretty here. Um, we could do a couple of things. We could create a, a button bar where here it could be uh, share your code or copy your code, right? Um, the share can do a show share link or share link where we're sharing the uh, invite code of the user. The right action can be a copy code, uh, copy to clipboard, invite code of the user. 
So this would actually open up like the sharing settings on their screen so they could share it via Facebook or text message or whatever. Or they can just copy it and, just, and it just copies this value. If you want to do something even prettier than that, what I recommend doing is creating a template column. We can call this like invite message. If I can spell invite correctly. Where we can say something uh, like, uh, hey, join me in the blah, blah, blah app, right? Um, by using my invite code, invite code below. And then here we can have like the invite code. Uh, see you soon. And then the at is like their invite code. Right? This pre doesn't have any yet because they haven't onboarded themselves yet. And so then maybe this is what you're copying here. So maybe the share your code or copy your code is that template column instead. Fine. Okay, but there's some ways that you can copy and invite, you know, so that we can uh, build some invite experience into your app. Um, what I would actually do personally is create an own like uh, invite somebody screen, which kind of flushes this out a little bit prettier, adding some images and some text and whatever else. Okay, so let's say person one or person zero here uh, goes and shares their code. I'm going to copy the code. And now person one is ready to onboard, right? They have an invite code, so they'll paste it in and then they complete their profile. All right. So now you see that they were assigned 002 because that was the next counter as part of our logic. You'll also see because that the 001 was a valid code, it kept it when this person um, onboarded. All right, let's have person three do the same thing. They're gonna put in person zero's invite code and complete their profile. They are now assigned 03, which was the next in line. It kept the code because it found a match in the invite code. All right, the next person, person four, right? Maybe they're gonna type an invite code, but they put in something incorrect, which doesn't have a match, right? When they complete their profile, right? It still gives them a new code, so they can still share it with somebody but you see that it cleared their entered code because that zero didn't find a match with anybody here. All right, so now we have something functional where everybody has an invite code when they're onboarding themselves, um, and we have a way to track entered codes. Now, the question you might have is, okay, what if I already have um, a sheet that already has 100 users in it? You know, how can I give them invite codes? Right. So what you could do is create an experience or create some some temporary logic here, which builds out this same code structure. What I would do is maybe something like this. So I would um, create a column, maybe a look. Here's probably what I would do. I would do a lookup column and call this row ID or row number. Right, the relation column will, will be uh, just the user's row ID. Okay, so now we have an array of everybody's row ID. Then we're gonna create a row number by using an array find element index. And we'll call this row number. Uh, the values will be the row number and we're gonna find the row ID like so. Okay, so it's basically creating a row number for everybody. Okay. Um, then we want to format this the same way as we did in our invite code generator. So I would create a padding. So text pad at start. I would do the row number. Length the same as before, seven, padding with a zero. Done. And then I would do a template column on this. So template, you know, ALC, followed by that padded value. Okay. So then this gives me 
a generated number for everybody, right? So then I can just go down the row and just copy them all. So I'll just select everything, copy, come over to my uh, invite code and paste. Like so. Now, once I have this, right, then what I want to do is um, see what the last number is. In this case, it's 16, because then that means my next code should be 17, not 5. So I just find whatever the last number is here, 16, go to my invite code generator, and just give it the next number, 17 in that case. All right, so now I know that the last person was a 16, but the next code would be 17. And then I can set it and forget it and know that my app is going to work correctly. All right. Now you have to you would have to do this um, prior to anybody onboarding because if people are onboarding already, you see this 001 should belong to this person, not this person. Right. And so you know that. Um, yeah, you'll, you'll definitely want to create this logic ahead of time prior to users signing in. Otherwise, if they've already signed in, they've already started entering codes, you'll just have to go through and manually give them invite codes ahead of time and then go in and see what the last number was and uh, adjust it there. And then uh, you wouldn't need these columns anymore. Then you could delete them and know that everything is hunky-dory. Okay, uh, just to make sure our, our values are correct, I'm actually just gonna flip-flop these because this person was number one, so I'll just give this person number zero and we should be good to go. Okay, so then the last piece of the puzzle here is to determine, okay, who has used my invite code, right? So to that, it's one last relation. Oh, because we don't, yeah, sorry, we don't need this row number anymore either. All right, so I'm gonna create one more relation here. And I'm going to relate my invite code to other users' entered code. Right? And we're going to match multiple. And we'll call this rel to valid invites. All right? So I can see that two people have used my code, person one and person three. Person one and person three. Right? as part of the onboarding process. And then from here, I can do a number of things. Um, I can get a count, so a count of invites. So you can just do a roll up and grab the relation of valid invites row ID. You can just get the count. So I see that I have two invites and I can display this somewhere. Um, even better, what if in your app, these people are generating uh, dollar amounts, let's say. So let's say we have a list of um, maybe a list of uh, exp expenses or um, maybe each of these people have plans or subs subscriptions, right? Subscriptions. And so let's say person one and person three both have subscriptions. Right, um, and maybe they have subscriptions. Let's give them a dollar amount. Maybe this person has a nine ninety nine subscription. Maybe this person has um, a fifteen ninety nine subscription. Right, and maybe you want to give this person some compensation for referring these two people. Right, So you have this relation to valid invites. What you could do is then relate this, sorry, uh, you do a lookup of the valid invites. So we'll call this uh, valid invites emails. So we're gonna grab the valid invites emails, right? And then relate this to your subscriptions. We'll call this to rel invites subscriptions subscriptions we're going to relate the valid invites emails 
to the subscriptions email. Match multiple. Right? And then we can do a roll up of the subscription amount. And we can do the sum. So we see that this person has generated $25.98 worth of invited people, right? This person invited two users. The dollar amount for those two users was $25.98. And maybe you want to give this person a recurring subscription every month, a recurring kickback of 20% uh, of this, right? So we could do this like a 20% invite reward where you just do a math column. And we'll just do 20% of the invite reward. In this case, it's $5.20, right? And so then you can display all these things maybe on their user profile. So if I sign in as this person, right, I can create a nice little table for myself where we have um, number of invites, followed by a reward. There we go. So now every time somebody signs up with this person's account and creates a subscription, let's say, I'm sure they can see how many people are using their code and then how much revenue they received based on using that code. So some fun things you can do here with invite codes, um, creating unique values, making them look pretty and branded to your app, and applying that logic in a variety of ways. Now, if you found this video interesting, make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future comment. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.